Hey everybody and welcome back to some more Oxygen Not Included. We are back once again with the Impenetrable Gang. It's cycle 328 and if I'm not mistaken, that is about 23 cycles ahead of where we left off at the end of the last episode. The reason for that being that I've spent a bit of time between episodes tidying things up a little bit and also uh, trying to make the base just look a little bit nicer and function in a bit of a better way, kind of doing stuff that we've done before and I really didn't think that you guys would want to see me do again. Uh, so for example, you'll notice I've now got eight bedrooms all fully fitted out with the comfy beds, the blue tile, the paintings, the, the, the statues, and of course the ensuite bathrooms. And one of the biggest things that I've done between episodes is I have tried to tame our plumbing overlay just a little bit i've tried to organize my pipes somewhat i know it doesn't look like it they're still a little bit of a mess but i think they are now a little bit more organized than they were before uh, at least in the upper part of the base here the lower sections of the base are still a little bit messy and there are still some pipes like these ones over here that are currently not doing anything whatsoever but for the most part every single uh, bottom floor so all of the tiled area here is water coming into a room so it goes in and then goes up and across to the uh, the shower and the the toilet i have rearranged these a little bit so that now the shower is not behind the sink so that if our duplicates go into the bathroom just to have a shower and not to go to the lavatory they don't have to wash their hands we don't end up wasting uh, their time or their water or anything like that and i've also set up a few dolls on the back side here these are specifically set up in such a way that the duplicates can come in through these doors thus hopefully reducing the travel time a little bit for duplicates coming over from the power plants but they can't go out this way so they can't bypass the sink if they go to the toilet and then have to go down to the power plant for example that does result in some slightly longer travel times that i'm happy with right now they've got to go all the way over here up across through the farm and then all the way down into here and so eventually once we get rid of this like tank of water here i think i might have like this floor be just like a travel floor so our duplicates can get back and forth uh, from either side of like this block of buildings here without having to go all the way up and then all the way back down again but I digress. That's getting a little bit ahead of where we are right now. So new bedrooms are one thing that I've done. Uh, I also went ahead and expanded out our farming and tried to make sure that it was all nice and cool. I've also gone ahead and bumped up the priorities just a little bit so that our farming is taken care of above everything else because at the very end of the last episode, we were teetering on the edge of starvation like when i loaded back in today our calories were so close to zero and we were not producing food fast enough to where we actually got a few starvation pop-ups our duplicates were not able to eat enough food and so i took some drastic measures to try and get all of this back online um, i went ahead and gave mima the culinary skills so if we go down to here she is now capable of grilling and grilling too and i've also prioritized cooking for her as well so you'll see much like with frankie before her she is now prioritizing cooking as well and it kind of works on two fronts here not only can she help frankie out during the day with cooking but also uh, mima is on the night shift and so once frankie goes to bed mima can keep cooking food and keep making sure that the cycle is going and that more of our stuffed berries are being made even throughout the night which uh, will hopefully keep us from getting to that point of starvation again at some point soon here uh, over on the power plant side we'll notice that it's looking much bluer than it did previously the reason for that is that we now have a gas vent over here bringing in some of the oxygen of course from our electrolyzer setup and sending it over to this area the reason for that is that another thing that i noticed when i logged on is that we had carbon dioxide kind of coming all the way up to about here uh, and even kind of engulfing this room a little bit and so i did two things i re-engaged our carbon skimmer this thing is now back online and getting rid of some of the carbon in the area and on top of that i put down the oxygen vent just so that our duplicates can actually breathe while they're down here because i noticed one thing that was really slowing our duplicates down was coming into the power plant trying to tune up a generator and then having to go all the way back up to like here to breathe and then come back down to try and tune the generator up again rinse and repeat over and over and over again for each generator and so now it's much more breathable uh, it's also i think a little bit cooler 52 degrees celsius not super cool but it's a little cooler than it was before because we've got that cold oxygen uh, coming in there which is nice uh, the pipe here is not insulated and so the oxygen does get a little bit hotter on the way over to the coal area but it's it, you know 34 degrees is still not quite 56 degrees and so it does still cool down this area a little bit um, and also cools down the base just a tad on its way over there as well uh, which is something that we are kind of thinking about more and more as we go forward here uh, the base 
is a lot more orange now than it was when we started. Like in the beginning, it was very green in the center. And now a lot of the middle of the base is uh, kind of this light orange color with some rooms kind of approaching that 35 degrees Celsius mark, which is still not too bad, but it is getting a little bit hotter than I would like. Um, other things that I've worked on, uh, this pipe over here, you may remember in the last episode, kept breaking, specifically the part of the pipe that goes up through the cold biome here. And I was informed the reason for that is that the contents of the pipe the water inside the pipe was getting so cold that it was turning into ice and so you know it starts down here at i think about 50 degrees celsius yeah 50 degrees celsius it came up through here it went down to about negative 20 degrees celsius at times uh, in this pipe here and of course below zero it starts to turn to ice as soon as you got ice in a pipe it starts to break because that is not uh, the correct state that it needs to be in to move through that pipe there uh, and so all i've done is i've replaced some of these pipes here with insulated pipe so that now as the water moves through this area it does and absorb or maybe release as much of its heat to the surroundings and so kind of keeps its temperature a bit better the downside to this is that the water down here is 51 degrees celsius and so uh, what's happening right now is we are pumping semi-hot water up and into the base it does lose a bit of its temperature before it actually gets to the core of the base but even around here we do have water that's kind of closing in on 40 degrees celsius which is definitely not going to be helping with cooling the base down but Nevertheless, we're not going to work on base cooling today. What I want to work on in today's episode is hopefully trying to tame this cool steam vent over here. This thing periodically pumps out large amounts of steam, and hopefully in today's episode, we can capture that steam and turn it into water for use in our electrolyzer setup, uh, thus allowing us to not have to reliably move around and keep finding little pockets of water to pump into our base. Uh, right now, we're using the water down here, but as soon as that runs out, and you'll notice it has run out uh, quite a bit over the last 23 cycles, uh, we're going to have to move and try and find more water ideally we can harvest the steam from this steam vent and then use that water for our electrolyzer so we don't have to find more water going forward uh, or if we do find more water we can use it for things other than keeping our base full of oxygen that's the plan at least how are we going to do it fantastic question i'm glad you asked so I spent a lot of time between episodes trying to figure out the best way for us to harvest the water from this steam vent my initial thought was to try and cool the steam down enough to where it turned back into water it comes out of the gas vent at 110 degrees celsius and it turns back to water at about 96 97 degrees celsius in the game and so i tried finding ways to cool that down and you may remember previously we talked about the oxygen not included food calculator well that same website actually has a cooling calculator as well and i'll show it on screen right about now but I put in all the numbers I put in that we're trying to cool steam down from 110 degrees Celsius to 96 degrees Celsius, where you have a mass of 4.1 kilograms. You can see here the steam vent pumps out just shy of 4.1 kilograms of steam per second. And as you can see here from the calculator, that means that we would need about 240,000 DTUs per second. That's the number of DTUs that we would have to cool in order to get the temperature from 110 to 96 degrees Celsius, just because there's so much steam. And just to give you an idea of how much cooling that is that would require 20 wheeze watts the equivalent of three thermo nullifiers so three of this setup that we have down here just to cool the steam coming out of this thing uh, we could also use 60 ice machines which is insane uh, and there are also some other options there uh, with stuff like the steam turbine and so at that point i kind of switched my attention away from trying to cool the steam down because it seems like right now that's not really something that we have the capabilities of doing a lot of this the, the cooling setups that i looked into required a lot more power than we have right now power is kind of a sore spot for us we do have power coming from our natural gas generator but only 800 watts potentially 1200 watts if it gets tuned up we do have a little bit of coal left and we do still have coal obviously coming from our hatches and so we do have some power but nowhere near enough i don't think to actively try and cool this guys over here and so in the end i ended up settling on a system that does still use the steam turbine which you do have to go and unlock in the research tree here i believe it's somewhere up at the top there it is a renewable energy we're looking for the steam turbine which draws in steam from the tiles directly below the machine and, and uses that to produce electrical power so the idea here i'm going to press play real quick and speed things up so our duplicates can uh, hopefully get that research done and they should be able to survive i think somewhat unmonitored for a little bit of time here also real quick i did uh, fix this area as well i pumped in some cool oxygen maybe a bit too much oxygen because you'll notice now there's not quite as much hydrogen but our uh, drecos are eating again which is good they're not going to starve to death uh, anytime soon at least i hope they won't but uh, bank up here what we can do with the steam turbine is if we can get the steam hot enough because bear in mind the 
steam comes out of the vent at 110 degrees Celsius, but the steam turbine will only accept steam once it hits 125 degrees Celsius. And so instead of trying to cool the steam down, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and heat the steam up, at which point it will then get used by the steam generator. And the good thing about the system is that the steam generator actually outputs all of the steam as water and it outputs it at a slightly cooler temperature. It outputs it at 95 degrees Celsius, just cool enough for it to actually still be in a water state. Uh, you may remember back on the calculator, there was an option to use a steam turbine to uh, as a form of cooling. And the reason for that is that on a larger scale, you can use multiple steam turbines to delete large amounts of heat. That's not necessarily what we're doing, but it is kind of in a way. Our system is just going to take the steam, use it in the generator, and then we're just going to take the water that comes out of that generator and use it in our electrolyzer down here and then hopefully uh, this guy is going to output you know oxygen and hydrogen that's around 90 degrees and that should then get cooled down by our thermal nullifier to a point where it's actually usable in the base that's the plan at least now to do that we are going to need a couple of things first things first of course we're going to have to clear out uh, a bit of an area around here we're also going to have to get ourselves a thermo aqua tuna but that might be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. I'll come back to that one in just a second here. For now, the very first thing that I need to do here is I think get a ladder that actually goes up to the new area because between episodes, I did block off uh, the little exit that our duplicants used to use over here. The game does take a little while to save now that we're on cycle uh, 329, but I deleted what was a pathway here. And so right now our duplicants can't actually get over to this area. And so I'm going to build a ladder that goes up here. Water is going to flow down, but I think that is fine. Uh, our duplicants should be in a suit if ever they get to this point here. And then we're going to have them go up. For now, I will go ahead and analyze this because we've not done that yet. Um, and now that they have to go through the checkpoint, Stinky should be able to get up there and, uh, and scan the, the vent without actually burning to death, which will be very nice. I did try and I, I did do quite a bit of sweeping between episodes and I tried to sweep most of the debris off the ground. But then I also, after sweeping, went through and did a lot of pipe reworking. And so we do have a ton of water bottles, both polluted and non-polluted, all over the base right now because of just how many pipes I destroyed and then replaced and how much mopping I had to do. And so at some point, we are going to have to go around and do some more sweeping. Like these rooms here are just horrendous with the amount of... Uh, like bottles of water they have specifically the polluted bottles of water are um not great to have around they of course do pump out that polluted oxygen the bottle empty is set to priority nine and so if there are bottles around hopefully they will go and uh, move those eventually another thing that i should mention is that uh, somebody in the comments did point out that instead of using the wallpaper mod for our bathrooms here if we just use drywall which is uh here is in the base game under utilities we can actually get a, a white looking wall without having to invest in like diamond wallpaper it's just a small thing but i think it looks uh, quite nice compared to the slightly grayer color that we had in uh, in the last episode so over here we're going to do quite a bit of digging and we're also going to set up um, a bit of a box as well so let me see here how do i want to do this i think i probably want to have the floor of my what is going to become the room here be just like one tile beneath this guy and then essentially what we're going to have is i think we can have another tile here we're going to have another floor like this and then the floor above that is going to have our steam turbines and the way the steam turbines work is they actually do go through tiles so the top of the steam turbine will be up here and the bottom of the steam turbine uh, will be on the other side of the tile here and it'll be the bar that sucks up all of uh, all of the steam again we are going to have to do a lot of uh, a lot of digging here so i'm going to try and dig out pretty much everything around this is going to be quite a pain to do and it's probably going to require uh, quite a few ladders to get this off the ground so we'll throw a few of those down uh, like this and like this and the room does need to be a fairly decent size because this guy does pump out a lot of steam uh, continuously and so you don't want the room to be too small if the room's too small then it will very quickly get over pressurized and the vent will just stop emitting steam which of course is not what we want now the steam generators which uh, i hope our friend stinky is working on He's not always analyzing the uh, the geyser, of course, but after that, he'll go and start working on uh, on the steam generator. But the steam generators each can take in 2,000 kilograms per second of steam, and our steam vent here outputs just over 4 kilograms per second, 4,078 grams per second to be precise. And so, in theory, it would take three steam turbines to fully utilize all of that steam there, but I think we should be able to get away with just two steam generators because it's so close to 4000 which is almost like the perfect amount for two steam generators i think two should be fine and so i do kind of want to cancel this analysis because i really want stinky to go and do some research here oh he's getting the research done how far is he along he's not super far along but he's getting there slowly but surely so we'll wait for him to finish that while he's finishing that we'll keep building up here so 
The idea is that if we get our Thermo Aqua Tuna, this guy can cool down liquid. And so what we're going to have is we're going to have a loop of coolant. In this case, we're going to use water. And what we're going to do is we're going to pump that coolant into the Thermo Aqua Tuna, at which point it's going to get even colder. And that heat that is removed from the water is then output to the air around it. In our case, it's going to be output to the steam. So in that scenario, what we're going to do is we're going to actually heat up the steam around the Thermo Aqua Tuna, hopefully getting it to the point where we can then go into the steam generator. And then we're going to take the water that comes out of the steam generator, send it elsewhere. And we will probably also have to take out any water that gets too cold, just to make sure that the water in the loop is always hot enough so that the Thermo Aqua Tuna can cool it down. And so we probably will end up putting some of the water that comes from the steam generator back into the coolant loop, if that makes sense. If it doesn't right now, don't worry. I, it will make a lot more sense once we actually get this up and running. Now, um, our duplicates are about to uh, trap themselves into not being able to get up here, so I am going to delete these real quick. Now, another thing that we are almost certainly going to have to do here is set up a vacuum so that only steam is in this room. And I think... The easiest way for us to do that is almost certainly going to be with another water lock. And so one thing I am going to do here, I'm going to set this to like priority eight. We're going to dig up like this. And I'm not too bothered about the chlorine anymore because, of course, this side of the base is all now entirely uh, blocked off via this water lock here. So any chlorine that does end up down here is not going to end up in uh, the main portion of the base. So we'll dig this out and uh, we'll kind of just try and dig out as much of this area here as we possibly can. I'm going to set everything here to a slightly higher priority because I do really want our duplicates over here uh, working on this stuff. But we'll probably go a little bit higher on the ladder and set up a little water lock maybe right about here so that anytime our duplicates do come in or out, they don't uh, bring any gases with them, at which point we'll put a pump down. We'll take all the gas that's currently in here out of here. And so going forward, there should only be steam inside of this room. Of course, to set up a water lock, we do indeed need some form of water. Um, I have also, of course, temporarily disabled our metal refinery by just breaking some of the pipes here because as you may know if you watched the last episode this system really didn't work all too well at all it was way too hot for our anti-entropy thermal nullifier i definitely overestimated how much heat this guy could uh, could soak up and so we're gonna have to come up with another solution for the for the metal refinery in the future but for now liquid pipe let's go ahead and probably just tap in i guess right about here as per usual, it's going to be a bit of a janky pipe, but this pipe is very temporary. We don't actually need water up here in the long run. We only need like an initial bit of water to get the system going. And after that, uh, everything should just kind of be self, self-contained self and we should actually gain water from the system instead of losing water to the system. Now, another slight issue that we are going to run into is the fact that the Thermo Aqua Tuna does require uh, a whopping 1.2 kilowatts of power very similar to the metal refinery over here and right now we don't actually have any way of getting that much power up there i think the way we're gonna have to do this is simply by running a heavy watt wire up this ladder like so and then figuring out how we're going to connect it to the thermo aqua tuna in a second here of course we do also have the problem right now at least that the hydrogen generator doesn't produce enough power to run the thermo aqua tuna on its own and it's at this point that i should point out that the setup that we're going to build here is not power neutral. It does consume power because you might think, given the fact that we're going to use two steam generators and the steam generators, I think, can produce up to uh, 850 watts of power each if they're running at uh, peak efficiency, which I don't think ours will be, at least not at the start here. Uh, you'd think that would be enough because 850 times two is 1700 and uh, the Thermo Aqua Tuna only uses 1200. So you'd think a net of uh, 500. But um, I think when we get this set up, our steam generators, at least to begin with, are not going to produce 850. We might be able to tweak the system to the point where our generators can produce 850 watts, but for now, they're not going to. For now, this system is going to lose a little bit of power, I think somewhere in the region of like 400 watts. But essentially, the way to think about it is this pump down here that we have, this guy, uh, uses, I think, 240 watts, is it? Yes, 240 watts, plus the filter is an extra 120 watts, 360 watts, just to get water up into the base. And this is not even renewable. Of course, eventually this little liquid reservoir that we've got is going to run out. In fact, it's going to run out very shortly. And then we're going to have to move it and put it somewhere else and still use yet more duplicate time and yet more power. Whereas up here, even if it uses a little bit more water, even if it uses five, 600 watts of power, it's going to be running, hopefully, forever and giving us a nice source of water that we don't have to... Uh, bother our duplicates with right that's the idea at least so back over here how are we doing on research we have completed all the basic research so now we're just on to the advanced research it is quite a high tier research so it is going to take a little bit of time to get that finished 
Um, I did also tweak our hydrogen setup a little bit. Uh, this line here got backed up between episodes. And so what I've done is um, I've added, I've reconnected the line that goes over to the main hydrogen generator. Um, again, using the same technique we've done before. So all of the hydrogen will try and go from the input of the bridge to the output. If it can't, it will go over to the other hydrogen generator. We needed to do that, of course, because if this hydrogen tank gets backed up and there's too much hydrogen in the system, then the electrolyzer will stop working and the whole system uh, kind of comes to a grinding halt. Somewhat similarly to what it's doing right now, are we out of power? It's a silly question to ask because all of our machines do say no power on them, uh, but I would like it. We should have coal, right? Let me check real quick. Consumable ore. We do have 7.1 tons of coal. Uh, the good news about the natural gas generators is that we have slowly started to gain a stockpile of coal again because all of our coal is being generated by our hatches and then not being used by the um, the coal generators. Although, speaking of hatches, I did know this before I started the episode and I've just had too much stuff to talk about. Um, our stone hatches are starving because there was no food in here. I did notice before the episode started, we had like three hatches in here who were starving and I have not fixed that. Now, they should be being fed igneous rock and I'm fairly certain that we do still have igneous rock. Let me check. I think it's under raw mineral. It is. We've got 300 tons of it. I think the problem is it's just not a high enough priority, despite being priority eight. Can we get, like, some uh, some food in here, guys? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to set that to priority nine. It goes, it, I guess that goes to show how hard I've been working my, uh, my duplicates here. Uh, we can go ahead and wrangle a couple of these wild hatches. Like, we wrangle this guy. And uh, if we go ahead and maybe wrangle one of these guys, because these guys are overcrowded, and we get them put back in this uh, in this other room, we should be able to kind of restock our hatch supply. But we are very reliant on our hatches right now, so I would like to get those guys back in there as, uh, as soon as possible, if we can. Another thing that I would like to work on, if we get time in today's episode, which uh, we might do, we're still waiting for that... Uh, steam generator research is our mess hall right here right now we've got just a standard mess hall you may remember at the start of the series this was a grand hall and at one point we took out the water cooler and moved it up into the recreation room and so now this is just a standard mess hall it's not a great hall anymore and so our duplicates aren't getting that morale boost that they get from eating in a great hall and so what i've been thinking about is potentially moving the mess hall and splitting it up into two great halls we've got two new rooms up here uh, now that we got rid of all of the bedrooms that used to be here and here um, i'm thinking just replacing both of these rooms and having two great halls one where all of these duplicates eat and then one where all of these duplicates eat and hopefully that will bring the morale up just a little bit morale is okay right now i have seen a few people kind of teetering on the edge especially between episodes i didn't do a lot of work over here and so um right now our duplicates morale seems to depend almost entirely on whether or not they go through the nature reserve because the nature reserve is such a big boost to morale and so i'd kind of like to um to change that if at all possible and so to do that i think i will go ahead and furniture mess table we'll just set up two great halls now to do that we do of course need at least four mess tables in each room like so we'd also love to have um a fridge in each room as well now i'm not sure if our duplicates will know to put the food into like two different fridges i don't think they will and actually i don't even think it's worth having two different fridges now that i think about it i think it might be a better idea we are slowly but surely gaining killer calories but i think it might be a better idea to maybe just store everything in one fridge to try and save on power because right now i think this is using an unnecessary 120 watts like it's it's storing a tiny amount of food as is this one over here and so you know what i'm going to delete this and then over here i'm going to allow stuffed berries to be stored in this fridge that does mean that eventually this fridge is going to fill up but i think by the time this fills up then that's fine we don't need to be storing more bristle berries in uh, in the fridge at that point we could potentially even set up a um a bit of automation wire although i don't know if the automation wire as per usual i think the automation wire um will it's used to turn the fridge on and off. I don't think it's used to determine how much food is in the fridge, although that would be useful. Um, but nevertheless, we'll get rid of this uh, this fridge here. We'll put everything into this fridge here, which I will set to a priority eight to get everything uh, put into there. Otherwise, it is going to go bad real quick here. So like priority nine, please sweep that up. But then up here, we got our four mess tables. That's perfect. In order to make it into a great hall, we do need, I think, one fancy piece of, of decor and then also one recreational building. So... I'm not too sure what, like, I know the water cooler counts as a recreational building. We also apparently have unlocked the arcade cabinet now as well, which is uh, interesting. One thing, I was looking at, like, other ways that we could um, improve our duplicates downtime, but 
everything that improves downtime, like the jukebox and the arcade machine, and even the espresso machine, which multiple people have pointed out to me in the comment section, they all use so much power. They all use like over a thousand watts to get them going. And so uh, those are definitely like late game recreational devices that our duplicates can use, um, you know, when we're a bit wealthier than we are right now, especially on the power front. So I think we'll have, you know, a few paintings in here, like this and like this. We'll have like some large sculptures maybe on both sides. I think the water cooler is like the easiest and smallest recreational building we can build. Like obviously the jukebox in the arcade machine is is huge. Um, I think it would count even if it was was empty. The annoying thing is that this this guy is like it's it it's like two blocks wide, and thus like I would love to be able to put it right in the middle here, but I can't. And so for symmetry's sake, I'd have to have two like one on each side, which of course I don't want to do. That would be a little insane. I kind of want to have two large, you know, sculptures, one either side, but then I don't think there's another, like, recreational building that, um, that our duplicates can use. And so, you know what, sure, I guess we'll have a water cooler. I'm going to put it at the front. I was going to put it at the back, but if I put it here, it's going to make it that much easier for our duplicates. And you know what, I think I might put it, like, one tile closer as well, uh, but putting it here is going to make it easier for our duplicates to fill it up because somebody does have to come in and manually fill this thing up every now and again so i think we'll go without the sculpture for now and we'll just have like the water cooler on the one side we could have like a wall plant maybe like here and i keep clicking r to rotate it's not r to bear in mind that it's uh but yeah i think we'll have like two wall plants like that and i think that should be enough right that should be everything the, the duplicates want it to be and we'll do the same thing on this side as well we'll have a water cooler uh, right about there? Is that right? No, that's not right. It needs to be one tile over. Right about there. We'll put the same two big paintings in. Like, were they that low down? Are they touching the... Oh, they are, yeah. They are quite low down in that room. Wait. No, that's not right. It's like this, this, and I think I had the water cooler right the first time. I think it goes down right about there. I would like to put some wallpaper in there as well. And again, looking at the color palette here, I think I might go with dirt. Like, it's, it's, I'm trying to, I was going to go with iron, like, for this orange color here, because I am thinking of getting rid of this room, because it's not really serving uh, much of a purpose just yet. Uh, but I think I'll go with, I'll, I'll put, I'll fill this room with dirt. Not the nicest material to have your, uh, <laughs> your room made out of, but of course the material uh, doesn't matter in the long run. I'll just see how it looks. If it looks bad, we can always change it uh, in the future. How are you doing on this research, my friend? You are almost there, halfway through on uh, on the top section is research is not set to a high priority i'm going to change that i would very much so like it if uh, if stinky would go and, and get some research done i did spend the time in trying to make sure that each duplicate was assigned to a bed close to where they work so frankie sleeps in this bed uh, stinky who's in charge of research sleeps in this bed i think bubbles who does all the farming sleeps in this bed um, and then I think there's some logic on the other side as well. I think maybe Bert sleeps in this bed because he's closest to the oil refinery, which, of course, when we get some more oil, we do want him working on that. And so I did put a bit of thought into trying to make that work. Um, I quite like this, actually. I like the uh, the orange, though. I think it looks good. Um, I think the end goal, really, is to have most of our base covered with this wallpaper. It does a pretty good job of, uh, of covering up the pipes and whatnot that go all around the base. And then in here, we will not plant the Buddy Bud seed because... Uh, we, we don't want to kill Mima. So instead, we'll just plant some briar seeds in here, I think. We've got quite a few of them, and, uh, and they look quite nice as well. So we'll plant those on both sides. Let's not forget the other room either. Boom, boom. And we'll do the same thing once again. Wallpaper, dirt, and we'll fill in this wall as well. Nice. And hopefully that classifies as a great hall. Let me check real quick. It does indeed. Fantastic. So we now have a great hall over here on the left. Uh, we should probably assign these in line with the people on each side of the base. So like, for example, we can assign this one to Bubbles uh, as well as Stinky. And also Frankie, I believe, is on this side. And then finally, May as well is assigned to the bottom there, like so. And then if we get rid of all of these tables, I think that the other four duplicates will auto assign themselves to the mess tables on this side. Again, Briar Seeds here. And as soon as that's done, we'll put it there as well. And I think the base is coming along quite nicely. It's looking a lot nicer and a lot more symmetrical than it was just a few episodes back. You know, the aesthetics of the base are definitely looking a lot better. And I think we're also quite, quite sustainable right now. Of course, the one thing uh, that is unsustainable about our base at the moment is the water. You know, this guy down here is very close to running out. Everything else seems pretty sustainable. We've, of course, got power coming from our natural gas uh, geyser, which is probably close to going dormant. These are almost all full. Um, so power is doing fine. We've always got coal coming from our uh, hatches. 
So water is really the only thing that we have uh, left to work on here. So ideally, the steam generator will be done uh, any minute now. I guess whilst we're waiting for that steam generator to get done, we can go and um, work on some more of what's going on up here. Uh, I do, of course, have to dig out yet more of this top level. So we're going to have like more mesh tile along here. We have to uproot this plant and then dig out pretty much all of this like so. Now, I don't know quite, I don't know how wide the steam generators are. I'm probably going to make this room about as wide as two steam generators. So I don't want to go too far out on this side just yet. Um, we are going to have to put, of course, a gas pump in here as well to get all of the gas that's not steam out of here to begin with. And then for now, we will just go ahead and store that gas inside of a reservoir. And so I'll probably build that like right about here so we can just store that gas somewhere for the time being. I'll have that run like just down and across like that. Of course, power is required here as well. And that's another somewhat tricky point because we, although we do have power coming up, it's coming up in the form of the heavy watt wire. And I think for now, the, the easiest way to do this is just going to be to slap down a transformer. Obviously, we don't need the transformer for the, um, the aqua tuner. But I think if we just have a transformer, say, right about there, and then we have the heavy watt wire come in, and then for the aqua tuner, we can just go over it we don't have to go through the uh, the transformer for that uh we will get rid of the door we don't need that door right now so we'll set that to like a priority eight deletion get rid of that any second now hopefully all of these yeah we need to set these to a higher priority as well i definitely need all of this stuff digging out research is done it is nice okay so steam turbines they do require quite a bit of iron like refined iron they require 800 and we've only got um 1260 and so we do need some more again unfortunately our metal refinery is offline and so for the time being we're going to revert back over to iron ore here and we'll go ahead and make like 15 more lots of iron down there real quick and then let's take a look how big is the steam generator it is five tiles wide and as you can see here uh, the steam vents that suck the steam in are on the bottom side of the tile uh, you can see the arrows going in there and so ideally this guy i think is like what three tiles wide maybe four tiles wide i think what we're going to do is we're going to have one steam turbine right about here and then one steam turbine right about here i think we'll have one like either side of the geyser it's not perfect because the geyser i think is four tiles wide it just looks three tiles wide because it's kind of uh, right heavy although i guess we could in that case just have like have them right next to each other like here and here sure must be built in unoccupied space which means we do need to uh very much so get all of this stuff dug out here and so real quick guys i'm gonna go away i'm gonna dig out this entire area over here i'm gonna build a little box room and uh, i'll come back in a second once we've got like all of this taken care of okay so a little while later and we have something that looks a little bit like this we've managed to make a complete vacuum inside of the room that the cool steam vent is in we've thrown down our thermo aqua tuna i did make the mistake of not putting a heavy watt joint plate in before i made the vacuum and so for now we've got this um somewhat janky looking heavy watt wire that has to go through the water lock to get to the thermo aqua tuna uh, ideally we just have like you know a, a joint plate here but if i was to put a joint plate in now it would break the vacuum and i'd have to put the pump back in and do all that all over again which of course is not something that i want to do also there's a freaking steam vent here like 10 tiles away from our core steam vent is a normal steam vent the difference being the normal steam vent output steam and i think like 500 degrees celsius it outputs steam so much hotter uh yeah 500 degrees celsius so we might be able to make this work i'm gonna focus on this for now and pretend that i didn't see that for the time being but um what we can probably do is maybe utilize this to get some steam power but maybe that's too hot like maybe we'd have to cool that down because I think the max the steam turbines can take, or the temperature they can take that makes them optimal is like 200 degrees Celsius. So 500 is a bit too hot, and cooling that down might require a bit too much power right now. So for now, I'm going to leave that there. It was hidden behind some obsidian and granite and all this stuff here. It was only when I saw the neutronium, like I tried to, I scheduled the dig task, and one of my duplicates was stood there with its laser gun trying to dig out the neutronium, but the bar wasn't going, and so it was only at that point that I noticed it and thought to uh, to dig out the area above. But nevertheless, back over here, so we've got our steam engines, our steam turbines, we've got a thermo aqua tuna, steam geyser ready to go. He's going to erupt in 27 cycles. So the idea here is that we're going to set up a loop of water, and we're going to have that water go into our thermo aqua tuna. And we're going to keep it insulated for now. And then in the thermo aqua tuna, oh, that's annoying, it is going to, I guess we're going to go this way. The thermo aqua tuna, uh, and this doesn't need to be yellow alert, by the way. This can simply be priority nine. But the thermo aqua tuna is going to cool that down. And then it's going to go around, up, and then 
It doesn't need to go through this room. And again, I don't need this to be priority alert, but we'll change that there. Uh, it doesn't need to go through this room, but I think it's going to help because if we have a radiant pipe go through this room, we can then cool down our steam turbines using uh, some of the cooling that we get from the thermo aqua tuna. At that point, we're going to go back to insulator tile after it's left the room. And then we're going to connect that back up and down and into the input again. And so this is going to loop around over and over and over again, uh, getting colder and colder as it goes, right? So it's going to start at whatever temperature we pump it in at. That's likely going to be whatever temperature this water is right now, so 35 degrees. We're going to pump it in at 35 degrees, and then it's going to slowly but surely uh, get colder as it makes its way around and around. And eventually it's going to get too cold. What we don't want to happen is we don't want the water going through the thermo aqua tuna and then turning into ice. And so we are going to have to set up a shutoff mechanism that takes the water out once it reaches, um, I think, around about 15, 16 degrees Celsius. If I'm not mistaken, the Thermo Aqua Tuna removes about 14 degrees right here, cooling factor 14 degrees Celsius. So it's going to take 14 degrees out of the water. And so I guess to be safe, we could take the water out at about 17 degrees. That way, the coldest our water could ever possibly get would be about three degrees Celsius. And so under plumbing, we're gonna get a uh, liquid pipe thermo sensor. We're gonna put it right on top of this pipe right about here. And then canceling these real quick, we're gonna have to use, um, I believe a shut off, a liquid shut off like this. And so ideally we do this, we have the insulator pipe go like this and using automation wire, we can turn our shut off on and off. So. If the liquid shutoff is on, then the water is going to go through and it's going to get dumped out over here. If it's off, the water won't be able to go into the shutoff and will go straight through uh, over and into the thermo aqua tuna. And so for now, all we're going to do is we're going to set up a little uh, reservoir for water, which is going to go over here. And we're going to pump our very cold water into it like so. Uh, then we've got to deal with the hot water that comes out of our steam here. So we're going to bring that out. Uh, and again, we'll stick with insulated tile because we don't want this is gonna come out at 95 degrees celsius we don't want that heating up uh, the room around it there and so for this one i think what we want to do is we want the water to mostly just go into this uh, tank here with the cold water but we also want to be able to refill our loop if the loop runs out of water because of course as i mentioned earlier what's going to happen is the water is going to slowly but surely lose temperature as it goes around if it gets too cold the water is going to go out into this tank that does mean that over time we are going to lose water and so ideally we want to replenish that water with some of the water coming from the steam turbines here now how do i want first of all we can get rid of this pipe here but how do i want to get this back into here i think we want to go with probably just the standard setup for this which is just have a um a gas bridge so we'll have the water come down like this and then actually i guess we can do this further down now that i think about it if we have the gas bridge right about let's say we could even do it here i guess like right after the um the temperature change if we did something like this no, we should probably do it. <laughs> we should do it further up because otherwise we have to have two gas bridges. Um, by gas bridges, I of course mean liquid bridges. So if we do this and we do this, that way the water is going to come in here and it's going to try and go through and into this pipe first. If it can't, because this is all banked up, then we want it to go across and connect up to here, thus going around into the liquid reservoir. I think that should work. I'm also going to set up a little bit of a, um, a fail safe in here as well. I'm going to put down a thermo sensor, which we probably want a little further away from. I'm, I'm wondering where we should put this because my, my thought process is that we don't want this thermo aqua tuna to get too hot. I have made it out of gold, so it can get um, a little hotter than usual, but its overheat temperature is 175. I believe that doesn't include the 50, although maybe it does. Maybe it's 125 normally. Um, and so we don't really want our, our steam in here getting too hot, which does limit the efficiency of the steam turbines. They work best with steam that is 200 degrees Celsius. Our thermo aqua tuna can't quite get there. And so to make sure that our thermo aqua tuna doesn't, you know, explode um, or melt would probably be a better way of uh, describing it. Uh, we should have a thermo sensor, which for now, I think I'll just put over here on the opposite side of the geyser. And then we'll have that connect up with automation wire to here so that if ever the temperature goes above we can say 150 degrees celsius then the thermo aqua tuna will be turned off the temperature increasing will stop and things will just you know grind to a halt for a second whilst the steam cools down that's the idea at least so i think this system might just work we of course do need to pump water into it and so actually i'm quite glad they didn't uh, empty that plumbing out just yet because we do have to hook that up uh, like so and then hopefully 
we will see water coming in. We are starting to run out of water because our pump down here uh, is now completely empty. Uh, we could try and dig this abyssalite here to get some of that water to flow in. It's not ideal, of course, because of the fact that, you know, it's abyssalite and it takes a while to go through. I'm hoping that the little bit of water that we have left in here, we've got a whole reservoir full of it. I'm hoping that will be enough to, to keep us going. The reason why it's full, Isaac, is because it's not hooked up, you fool. If we do that, now it's going to start emptying its water out. Okay, uh, let me check on oxygen real quick. Yeah, it's okay. It's not great. It's actually quite low. 500 grams is not super high. We're out of algae, so they're not uh, filling up the diffusers right now. We could temporarily go and dig some algae out. Like there's algae down here. We could dig this out to try and provide our base with uh, a little bit of oxygen in the event that we don't have uh, enough water here. But hopefully the water's making its way up. It is. So we do want this. I'm going to Alt-Z real quick. Um, I do want this to fill up quite a bit. This is disabled by the automation grid. So I want you to send out a green signal if below, let's say like 145. So right now it should be below 145 and thus a green signal should be being sent. You are not though? Otherwise, send a green signal if the ambient temperature is within the selected range. Current temperature is negative 273 degrees Celsius. Ah, okay. So real quick. Oh, well, that should still work, right? It's in a vacuum, which is why it's so cold. But that should be... That should be sending the wire. I'm going to set it to 145, and then temporarily I'm going to delete this automation wire in the hopes that that will turn it on and then we can replace it back down once maybe some steam gets in here. I'm wondering if the fact that it's a vacuum is what's kind of causing it to, uh, to act a bit funky right now. Uh, the liquid shutoff does require power, so I'll hook that up to the same line that uh, previously connected up our gas pump and the wiring here is a little janky we could probably do with trying to refine the all of the wiring and all of the plumbing to make it a little bit neater in the future but really for now i just want to try and get this to be operational and then once it's operational we could then look at trying to make it look a little bit nicer does the sensor not also require power i thought it might have done it doesn't hold on let me check down here i think we have another sensor right we had one over here does this guy require power no, okay, cool. Uh, the reason why there was a power sign there is because that is where our heavy watt wire connects up. Uh, and speaking of heavy watt wire, we do also want to uh, connect that back up as well so that some of the power from this guy uh, can be circled back around. And as I mentioned before, I don't think these are going to produce as much power as the 850 because our steam is nowhere near 200 degrees Celsius. So uh, not enough steam. You, insufficient resources, iron. We do not have... Oh, we don't have like the, the process line, of course. Okay, let me go ahead and schedule uh, some of this. There we go. Uh, we'll speed that up as well. We need some more iron for the piping there. That is fine. Uh, that's also going to stop. That's also... Ah, that might be one of the reasons why that's not moving, actually, now that I think about it. Even though it does also say disabled by automation grid, which it shouldn't be anymore. I think the reason why it's saying that is because it doesn't have anywhere to send it. We also might have to put a, a bridge in here somewhere. I'm hoping that the input of this will kind of push the water around because as with our setup down here, um, and they still not rebuilt this because there needs to be a tile here, but uh, the reason why we had this gas reservoir for our hydrogen cooling system is that in order for gases and liquids to move in a loop, they have to have an input and an output. I'm hoping that I'm fairly certain that they should count as an input and an output and should keep the liquids moving. Uh, but if it doesn't, we can always put a gas bridge in to uh, kind of force that input slash output. We do also want to lock off this steam room, like so. Just to make sure all that heat gets out, I think, for the most part. Like, that's probably the biggest issue. Uh, we'll do that, I guess, after actually, after we've done this. We shouldn't build that before the pipes are built. That would be a bad idea. Hopefully, the pipes are almost there. Okay, so they've just built the last iron pipe there so we can go ahead and finally close this off i think everything in there is uh is good to go the loop should at that point begin going why are you disabled by automation there we go okay i just had to get rid of uh of the wiring there oh my goodness that is loud okay so power they obviously there isn't enough power for it but it is cooling the water down which is good uh the shut off we haven't configured. So if the temperature is below, let's say 17, output green if it's below 17. So right now it should be outputting a red signal. There we go. And so hopefully uh, the water should be going the normal way it is. Um, I have set up an unintentional loop here. 
we have to change that. So this pipe needs to go and we're going to have to have a bridge in place so that the water can't loop back in on itself. So we'll get like a priority nine delete there. Uh, and instead we'll have like a bridge, I guess, that comes and connects up down here somewhere. Yeah, this will be fine. It's a little weird, but it's going to come here. If it can't go through there, it's going to go across and then connect up like this. Yes, that is fine. Because that way that's still an output. It can only flow one way. Perfect. Okay. So I think this system is hopefully going to work. Damage overheating. Oh my goodness, this erupted early. It said next activity in 23.6 seconds. And yet it is already, uh, already here. How? Excuse me? How is that so hot? There's no... Hold on. Okay, first <laughs> first things first. Uh, automation wire. I don't think we have... Oh, maybe we... Mm. Okay, I think I see what's happened here. Priority infinite. Come and fix this real quick. Uh, come and put the automation wire in. Um, I think what's happened here is that there is water here on the ground, which, of course, was not supposed to be. And the water has evaporated as soon as this turned on. And I guess it's evaporated at a very hot temperature. I don't know why it would be quite so wildly hot. Not enough steam. That makes sense. There's only like milligrams of steam here, but this has instantly become so very, very hot just because of the fact that there is so much steam in there. Either way, I think this should work now. Uh, the valve is shut off. And so just as soon as... I don't know, let me, let me see here real quick. If I disconnect, if I delete these pipes here, I'm going to set that to like priority nine. If I delete these pipes, I only need to delete the one, I guess. Hopefully that will loop around. We mm, might have to repair this because it looks like it is going to break. I think this should go straight through. The idea being that if it can't go into the input, it should go straight through the output. I would hope. The problem might be that there's no call for an input yet, so it might have to go like all of this water ha might have to move. Um, that could be a problem. Let me let me see real quick. If I like priority nine empty this pipe out, although maybe. Hmm. Actually, I think what I might do instead is put a um a gas bridge here to give that water somewhere to go, and then to get like create like another input output loop. Let me try that real quick. We're almost certainly have to fix this. Again, bizarrely, I think the way this is going to work now is that the room is going to cool down once the steam geyser begins to erupt. At that point, I think it will then begin spewing everywhere, but not until that point. So we'll set that to priority nine as well, get that uh, taken care of. I'll also, I'm not going to put a priority like eight or nine repair on this thing yet because it's going to break anyway. And we're going to have to wait 23 cycles before it becomes active. But I think in theory, this should work out. The final thing uh, that I do want to do is put down some temp shift plates. These accelerate or buffer heat dispersal uh, based on the construction material used. Now, I would like to build this out of, I think, iron ore, but we don't really have enough iron ore right now. And so once again, we are going to have to schedule uh, a bunch of iron ore. Thankfully, we do have 12 tons of this stuff. And so uh, scheduling quite a bit here is going to be fine. Hopefully somebody will go and punch that out and get us what we're after here. This is going to break. That's okay. Like I say, I think once the steam actually gets in here, the steam's going to come out at 110 degrees, not at such a high degree. And this system, I think, will work. This is still not connecting up, which concerns me. Um, unfortunately, guys, I think I am going to have to leave this episode on a cliffhanger because we've got to wait 23 cycles, 22.8 cycles which is quite a long time between now and the next eruption. We've spent about that time in this episode already, and it's already been way too long. And so uh, I'm going to wrap it up there. I did want to get this up and running today, but I can't test it until the guys are actually start erupting. So let me know in the comment section what you think of the setup, if there are any improvements you can make. Um, I'm going to try and figure out why this won't pump around here. And uh, hopefully next time we can fix that. Uh, see if this erupts, see if this works. Uh, the idea being the steam's going to come out. It's going to get used by the steam turbine. Uh, it's going to get pumped out as hot water into our liquid reservoir. And then we're going to use that hot water in our electrolyzer to then produce oxygen and hydrogen. The hydrogen is used for power. And the oxygen, of course, is used to keep our duplicates alive. But for now, guys, as always, if you did enjoy the video, please hit like. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos come out. As always, thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>